that. So originally, when I first put this thing together, I connected the engine generator output to the AGM batteries, which is where it had come from. And you know, the solenoid and the um, starter ran from the AGMs. But then I got clever because... Yeah, that's something to always be concerned about when you have all these great ideas out here by yourself. So what I wanted to do was charge the lithium battery that you see there from the alternator. And that's kind of a normal configuration because the lithium battery in turn charges the AGM batteries. But when I did that, I realized uh, then that the alternator was not putting anything out. And that's why I got a new alternator. And it still was not putting out any voltage to the battery. And we have the new alternator installed. Sadly, it doesn't seem to generate power at the moment. I'm figuring out the connection still. Trying to get that figured out today. I've got some tips from my good friend Ron, who is really, really smart at this kind of stuff. The test of the alternator being able to produce enough power to charge a battery. What you see on the rightmost meter, that's the ammeter, that's a positive number. It's 1.8, 1.5. That's how many amps are going into the battery right now, and that's all due to solar power. The sun just came up. Now I'm going to turn on the ignition switch. And you see it dropped to minus three. That's because the ignition circuit to charge, put the field on the alternator is drawing about four amps. Now we're going to start the engine. I mean, we think so. us that the new alternator is cranking out about 35 amps at least. So the battery's at 79% right now. And you saw the voltage come up as well. So I don't need to charge with the engine today. This is just a test. I should point out with this test the alternator output is connected directly to the lithium battery so if I get in a jam I can run the engine to charge my battery and that was the ultimate goal. End of test. So that idle speed is still going and I should point out that I have turned off the ignition switch. I only need to charge the field to get the engine started. It does have an internal voltage regulator I've learned Thanks, Ron. Um, that charges the field while the engine's going. Okay, end of test. Okay, back at the chart table, back side of the electric panel, we're finally going after it. And the first thing I've noticed, on removing the covering, which is like a vinyl film back there, this tabbing is not fully secured. Yikes. So. I'm thinking of what to do with that. I think I'm going to put a bead of caulk on the outside edge to seal it like a bucket and then pour a lot of epoxy in the top. But that is not going to be easy to do. I mean, like physically, because I need to get a container. I don't have any syringes to use for this. But if I pour the epoxy in, it's just going to run out the bottom. I need a thickener, which I don't have. <laughs> so. So that's not good. I mean, it's not a structural bulkhead in a way, so probably, I mean, if, it, if you ask the so what question, you know, so you got this thing not fiberglass correctly to the wall anymore, to the hall anymore. So the question is, so what? Is it going to sink the boat? No. Is it going to cause a fire? No. It's not going to cause any bad things to my, to my belief, you know, and uh, but still, while I'm here, before I build off the new electric system, I probably ought to do something about it. And I do have laminating epoxy here. I do have epoxy. I just got to think about exactly how am I going to do it. And that's, I'm just going to think about that today. But I think I'm going to go ahead and demob the electrical part, make it easier to work in there. <clears throat> I'm going to take all the existing panels here. So I've got 
a few switches on a few breakers on this panel and one breaker on the bottom, two breakers on the bottom right, but correction bottom left. So two breakers down here and I think three on the top, which are kind of sort of in service. None of that junk's in service except to be used as connections. So I'm going to take off both of these aluminum panels. Aluminium, I should say, depending where my friends are from. And I think I'm going to screw them onto a piece of scrap wood and kind of mount it down here. And that will give me freedom in this area to go ahead and kind of do some of the physical work before I start kind of rebuilding the electrical part. And it'll give me a chance to figure out like where did those two wires up there in the top left go. Probably to this light fixture, but I'm not 100% sure. There. Okay, that's part of the old panel gone. And I, I don't have an ammeter to replace this at the moment, but there's physical space for it. So I won't be replacing the ammeter eventually. This is hard to really see and it's hard. I'm trying to hold the light and hold the camera at the same time. Okay, so the power is going to come in and it's going to connect to that terminal and then it's going to get jumped over here to my uh, my breakers on the hot side. The line side of the breakers is here, there, and there. Then power goes through breaker to the respective load and then the power comes back to the ground and then it's going to go back to the ground wire which is going to be connected here. So I'm going to make these connections. I'm going to double test it with my meter one more time before I go. I've got the hot side protected, of course. Okay, let's get this done. Well, we're sitting here in Green Cove Springs on the St. John's River. Had a, I don't know, a squall blow through last night around between 3 and 5 o'clock and it's calm down nicely and I'm hoping I get better sunshine to charge my batteries today but life is good and I'm pretty pleased today because I don't have a a I don't have any work to do and B excuse me I finished my big electric project so I want to show you that real fast so my new electric panel is finished and there's, there's three spares in there and there's two others that are not presently used and I use these pigtails about a foot and a half long or 15 inches long and uh, running to my terminal boards. And so then I run from the terminal board, it goes out to the loads. And that way it keeps all these wires fixed in place and they never move. And everything worked. There were no sparking sounds and nobody died. So now I'm going to kind of close this. Okay, so. This is a new panel. If you guys come aboard, you can touch it if you want. I'm eventually going to put an ammeter here, and I think it's about the only instrumentation I want. Maybe a voltmeter. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about that again. I don't buy stuff willy nilly. Um, the, and the only all the work that's required on the electrical system is I need to run power to that light into this light this light here because this one right now is not powered in any way and that's because the existing wire it looked like it was from during World War II it was very it's these individual wires when you see these individual reds and the blacks and the blue and the black and whenever you see electric tape which was a scene of an old splice of some sort um, that's a sign that probably need to upgrade and just overhaul so I see yeah, so. It'll work. It's not pretty. In fact, it's atrocious looking as far as classic boats go, but it does. Yeah, so I'm uh, finished with the electrical project as a whole, as you see, the distribution side and the power side. Next year, I plan to put in a second uh, battery of 200 amp hours and probably more solar generating capacity. That's really what I need, more solar power. Um, 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 I would love to replace um, more lighting fixtures with really beautiful brass classic fixtures, but uh, that's been pretty difficult to find. And I'm kind of disappointed about that because the modern lights are quite expensive, and if they break, they break. There's no troubleshooting these LED lights, to my knowledge. So, 
kind of bummed about that, but whatever. I mean, a big scheme of life, it's not that big a deal. Um, so I'm done doing project work for the boat here in Jacksonville. So I did a lot of the work on the galley, as you saw, and I did the new decks in the floor, I did the top of the mass work, and I've done the electrical distribution system, and I put on a new alternator. So really, I'm pretty pleased with how much work got done in just two and a half months. And what that tells us is that it's time to go. The Blue Angels are on the weekend of the 23rd and 22nd, 23rd, and just about 10 miles north of here, so I'm going to move to an anchorage closer to that location uh, on Monday. I should have southerly winds. I can sail downriver. And after the, uh, the air show, I plan to head down the river and stage myself waiting for the right weather window to head for the Bahamas. And that's the basic plan. And it leads me into my subtopic for this trip, for this episode. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, I, and, I, and I bring this up because I had a guest aboard, which is often, which happens a lot. When I'm in a marina, people be passing by and they check out the boat and I say, come on aboard. So I, I do that a lot and I get a lot of people touring through the boat. And one guy, and I'm not going to tell you his name or anything, he's a good guy. And he made a comment that I don't have a life raft. And I'm just going to leave it like that. And, and it's, it is, it's a true statement. I do not have a life raft on this boat. And he said, well, you got to have a life raft. And I go, do I now? <laughs> so real quick discussion on safety and, you know, how safe must a person be? Or maybe the question is, am I too safe or am I not safe enough? And, and that's, it's a fair question. I don't mind the question. It's perfectly okay to me to have this conversation with anybody. Because uh, there's, a, there's a spectrum, right? There's a people out there who want to be absolutely perfect in every way. They want their boat to be perfect and they'll spend 10 years fixing a boat up and fitting it out with every known, every conceivable piece of kit and spending thousands and thousands of dollars doing it and they may never leave. Because if you want absolute safety while sailing, if you want absolute safety, then you never leave the dock, right? You just find a nice marina that's very secure and you tie up and you never go. You might as well tie up with chains. Um, and on the flip side, you could be completely reckless and just charge out there with no, no fuel, no food, no water, no nothing. Sales about to fail, everything bad, and you could just charge out there. And I, of course, don't want to be on either end. I like to sail, I like to move, I like to travel, but I'm also on a budget, and I, I don't have a salary. I'll point out, I don't have a traditional pension either. So. I'm trying to just make do with the minimum budget. The, the cruising target budget for me is 2000 bucks a month for operating expenses, and that includes com consumables, includes food and all that stuff. And, and I'm keeping that budget, budget pretty easily as long as I'm not buying things like new LED lights and things like that. So the prospect of buying a life jacket or catching a life raft, forget it. The radar, forget it. You know? And so um, I just wanted to say that and that I, I accept the risks. I don't have an EPIRB for the ship, and I don't have a life raft. And that's probably the two biggest safety things that I don't have. Um, I do have harnesses, I do have life jackets, I have all of the legally required stuff, of course. But, uh, uh, and I, I guess I'm just at the age where I, I accept the risk. And I, I really don't want some 18-year-old kid from Omaha who joined the Coast Guard for adventure, who had been through rescue diver school, I don't want them to risk their lives coming 500 miles out to sea to save me, and, I, and I, I don't want that. If I get my dumbass in position where I need saving, well then I have to get myself out of that situation myself. If I'm two miles off the coast of Miami and there's a bunch of girls in the Coast Guard who want to come and save me, okay, I guess I'll let them do that. But if I'm hundreds of miles out, no, no, I'm not going to call for help. And I accept that it could mean my death, you know, but that's something that we're all going to face anyway. And I, I'd rather I'd rather go down doing something like this than to be perpetually afraid to leave the dock until I seek perfection and weather perfection and boats and all that. So I did want to get that out there real quick. So let me slap this video together, have a snack, go ashore, get my gas can filled, and start working on a propane heater. We'll see how that goes. Take care, guys.